Well, my name is Brett Arn, and I teach seventh grade science at Heskett Middle School. I enjoy teaching because I enjoy making a positive difference in the lives of children. Uh, being able to mold young minds for future success is uh, very rewarding. Just put a check next to that statement. The Anticipation Guide is an instructional strategy that I incorporate in the classroom to assist with reading comprehension. Um, what I really like about it is that it incorporates three components of what I believe any successful lesson plan um, entails, and that is motivation, acquisition of the information, and then being able to extend for meaningful purpose beyond it. So we're going to look at the different stages of the water cycle, you know, how the water cycle affects us and what all it does. Another objective, the one in red up there, dry. Explain how carbon and oxygen are essential in the ecosystem. Very good. Do you guys know there's oxygen in our air? What I want you to do with your book closed, because this is all coming from your brain and prior knowledge, I want you to put a check next to the statements that you think are true, that you think are true. And if the statement's false, go ahead and leave that statement blank. All right. So this is all from your prior knowledge, what you've learned throughout this year and in prior grades about, you're welcome, cycles of matter. You have a minute and 30 seconds to make your six predictions. When you're done, go ahead and turn it over so the blank part's facing up. That way I know you're ready to move on. Now, you've just made your predictions. You don't know if they're right. You're not sure if they're wrong. What I want you to do next is with the person next to you, your learning partner, I want you to go ahead and share your predictions. because our population been growing for a while, like since back in other years, the um, present um, past years, and I don't think that it would affect it now all of a sudden. I think it, I think it has been affecting it since long before. So All right, excellent discussions going on. I was listening over to Walter and Leonard. They were talking about statement six and thought well hey 78 percent of our air is nitrogen so we must be able to get our nitrogen from the air because we need it to survive so interesting interesting points and we just kind of read and took what we knew from the past and, and made some of these guesses so what i'm going to have you do in just a second is not yet open up your book to page 48 it's right up here on the top of your anticipation guide and you're going to read from page 48 to, 40, 48 to 53. As you're reading, you need to keep your anticipation guide out on your desk along with your book because you're going to need to put down your evidence that you're using to support your beliefs. Now, let's just say, hypothetically, that I checked 1, 3, 4, and 5. All right? Just say, hypothetically, that I checked it. What happens if I, I'm reading, and as I'm reading, I find out that, you know what? I don't agree with number four. I think it's false now because of what I've read. Frank? Put an X. Okay, so I'll put a, a line right through that check. So now I know it's false, and then what do I have to do? You have to put the page number in the page. Page number and paragraph. Excellent. Now, hmm. Can you use diagrams, captions, pictures yeah, yeah. as support? Absolutely. All right, we can use all those. And remember, when we count our paragraphs, we always count them from the top. 
Right, so this up here would be paragraph one, two, three, four. So on the first page of this section, 48, there are actually four paragraphs that we're going to use. All right. Very cool. It should probably take us about 10 to 15 minutes to do our reading. All right, you're like a good lawyer. You're gathering your research. So when we come together to argue in the consensus, you have the information you can refer to in the book. So keep your uh, prediction guide statement out. Use inferential thinking because you're not going to find these exact statements in the book. I made these up. All right, but you can use the, the knowledge that you gained from the reading to make decide if your predictions are, were right or if they were wrong, and then change them if you need to. Okay, I'll be quiet. You have about 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do your reading. Remember, do not distract yourself or anyone else during the reading. Much, what is this statement asking or saying? Basically, water is recycled from used water. Okay, so when George Washington had his water, drank it, peed it out, right? It goes <laughs> into the ground, right? Yeah. Okay, where does the groundwater go? Yeah. Okay, into the ocean. So what happens to the ocean water? It goes into drinking. Evaporates. It okay, and then it, it comes, comes down, oh, precipitation, yeah. oh. and then what happens? Well, yeah, but how are we going to get it? Some of that water is going to go into our lakes, and where does that water from our lakes go? Well, it goes to our, it goes to our water treatment plants, doesn't it? Yeah. And then they pump it through the sewer and it comes to our water line and we drink it, maybe out of the water fountain. So it's, well, it's purified and clean. So is it potential that you could drink the same water that George Washington or even LeBron James or yeah. Martin Luther King drank? Yeah. yeah, it's possible, probably. So, so now, well, is my evidence... Here, if you check this out, water is essential life. To ensure the water cycle is a continuous process by which water moves from the Earth's surface to the atmosphere. So if it's continuing, then do you think that you think the water cycle has been going on forever? Yeah. Probably since the beginning of Earth. Yeah. All right, I uh, hear a little, ch little chatter, which is telling me that we're probably most, li most of us are done doing, uh, following the directions, all right, and have met expectations of the fact that you have citations for each. So I want you to take the next two minutes to come to consensus with your partner. Now your job has changed. Before you were just sharing your predictions, now you're coming to consensus. So come to consensus with your partner. When you and your partner have agreed, raise your hand, call me over, and I'll use your use yours as a focus point to help us come to a class discussion. All right, begin. I put down page forty-nine, page paragraph. You put figure five or forty-eight. And page it shows the processes of evaporation, condensation, and condensation, yeah, yeah. and precipitation. Make up words. Okay. So it says, first is evaporation, where water turns into a gas. Second, it condenses to sparkling water, and finally, it falls to the ground precipitation. So, what you put for number two? I checked it, but I ain't found it. No. Who's uh, paragraph three, page 49, it says, as more water vapor cond condenses, the water drops, the drops of water in the cloud grow larger. Eventually, the heavy crop, the, the heavy drops fall back to earth as precipitation, rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Most precipitation falls back into oceans or lakes. The precipitation that falls on land may soak into the soil and become groundwater. That's how I got all of this one. No. As I was walking around, I heard some great conversation, even using the information from the book that you were reading to help 
create your opinions and responses and to reinforce those. So Bradley and Deanna came up with these predictions. I'm going to zoom out. This is what they thought when they read these statements. And obviously they had evidence to support this. They felt that number one was true, two was true, three and five. Now, you may agree with them, you may disagree with them. I'm going to open up the classroom and I'm just going to facilitate discussion between you. I'm not really going to say anything other than just calling the next person to voice their opinion. Remember when you are arguing, you have to first tell the class which statement you're questioning, the page and paragraph or whatever evidence you use so we can all, I can write it down up here and you guys can all turn to it in the book. You must read the evidence that's specific or pertaining to what you're questioning and then give us your thoughts regarding why it's false or why it is either true. All right, we'll start off with Zaria. I thought number five was false. Okay. Because on page 50, paragraph two, it says that, um, it says that um, producers and consumers have a big part in Carbon, the carbon cycle, so I think it's false. Okay, good point. Justice? I say it's still true because on um, page 51, figure 7, it says that the carbon cycle is both of the most of the oxygen or carbon dioxide coming up from the decomposing of the consumer, most of the plant produce oxygen. Which make the consumers uh, have no carbon dioxide. You want to re refute that, Zaria? <laughs> you're saying that the for, you're saying that the consumers and decomposers have a big part in the carbon cycle, but then the question asks if, pursu if producers have a big part in the carbon cycle. So that's why. <laughs> Still think it's true. All right. Kayla? I actually was already on saying this wrong because on page 50, in paragraph 1, it, said, it does say that both producers and consumers have a good part, but it says for number 5 that it would be a good idea to have more producers producing than consumers. So therefore, if without as many consumers, they wouldn't give off as much oxygen, and the uh, producers would give off more carbon dioxide, that would affect the uneven balance. Is it the producers that are giving off carbon dioxide, or are they giving off oxygen? They're giving off oxygen. oxygen. And the consumers are giving off carbon dioxide. Okay. All right. Good point. Good point. Justice, go back to you. They, the producers, they start all the, they start all the cycles, like the whole cycle of going from oxygen to carbon dioxide. So you're saying the producers are what starts the cycle whole, the whole cycle. So what do we think? Is it true or is it false? True. Uh, one thing I would like to add, if you had too much or too many producers, then what's going to happen to your oxygen levels? It's going to go way up, all right? Which could be good for consumers, but what do producers need to be able to produce that oxygen? Carbon dioxide. So is it good to have more of one or where it's unbalanced or is it good to have more of a balanced. More balance. All right, more balance. So you both, all of you, have come up with some very valid points. I guess it's kind of where you look at it. My thought is if you're burning and destroying forests, which is what's killing producers, then you're actually creating more carbon dioxide and therefore less producers to be able to produce oxygen. So you have to look at the human impact in there as well. Well, I guess you could go either way. The on. anticipation guide is great because it, students are actually taking the information that they've read, interpreting it, applying it to a new situation, and defending um, their stance with knowledgeable information, information that they've not only obtained but interpreted and applied it to, in their own words.